Greetings everyone, this is Norn Expert here, back again for another video. Today, we are going to be solving problem number 39 and the difficulty has been rated at is medium. Uh, this problem was asked by Dropbox and let's just get down to it. So, Conway's Game of Life takes place on an infinite two-dimensional board of square cells. Each cell is either dead or alive and at each tick, the following rules apply. Uh, any live cell with less than two live neighbors dies, any live cell with two or three live neighbors remains living, uh, any live cell with more than three live, cell, uh, live neighbors dies, and any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell. Again, if you don't know what Conway's Game of Life is, it's basically like a puzzle which was built out by this mathematician, um, and basically it's sort of represented as a 2D matrix or a grid, whatever you want to call it. And each element, you have a state of a particular cell. And each cell needs to coincide to the rules which have been already stated. Um, and that's basically it. So a cell neighbors another cell if it's horizontally, vertically, or diagonally adjacent. Basically, if you go up, down, left, right, diagonally, so on and so forth. So all eight our uh, neighbors for a particular cell. So we need to implement Conway's Game of Life and fortunately we were able to find a similar problem on lead code. But before we go over there, one thing that we have to sort of look at is the fact that uh, they have said that it's taking place on an infinite two-dimensional board of square cells. So we need to make sure that our space complexity is the most optimal. So Let's just get down to it. So fortunately, again, we were able to find a similar problem called Game of Life on lead code. Again, you can pause this video and check out the link given in the description below. Um, and stating the same exact thing, that there are a bunch of rules which have been justified, and then we have to go forward from this. So if a particular input is uh, this particular matrix, where zero sort of indicates that a cell is dead, and one sort of indicates that a cell is alive, um, this is the following output which we need to generate. Again, it might seem like a simple problem, but there is a catch over here. The catch is, is that we cannot copy the matrix um, to understand what was the previous state. All right, cool. So before we begin, um, I want to make sure that you understand that there is a catch over here as well. And again, if you look at this particular element which I've highlighted here, if we sort of update this and you can see that this is supposed to be zero in the next iteration or the next step or the next tick, whatever you want to call it, since it's going to be zero, if we update it as zero, um, the next element which is here will not be one, whereas it needs to be one. So if you see this guy which I have highlighted here, the neighbors are this, 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 and this. And, and as you remember, if an element has three live neighbors, it's supposed to be alive as well. So even though if we update this zero, this to zero, then you know we would sort of face the problem. But before we get into that, we will start with our base condition and we'll check for whether there is something given in our parameter. If not, then we just return it. And the next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to make a neighbors array just to find the neighboring cells for each given cells. So let's just do that. Let's call it neighbors. Again, this is pretty easy to formulate. Um, there's not much here. All you have to do is, I have explained this in my previous videos as well, but all you have to do is you have to pick a particular element and you, and you have to basically look at um, what all operations, if I you know, subtract it, where would that particular index go um, and basically go on from there. So I'm sort of used to this. I've done this quite a bit of time, so I'll just do this a little quickly. Zero, one, and what else am I missing? So I think one comma one. I'm just going to this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And yep, I think I've got all. Awesome. Um, and now we also need a few other variables. Let's just create them out. We need the length of the row. So let's just do that. And we also need the length of the columns, which can actually be computed by the length of the first row. So we have the length of the rows and the length of the columns. And all we have to do is we have to do an iteration uh, to each of those elements. Um, but while we're doing that, we also have to make sure that we are not updating. I mean, we're still retaining the state of the value. So let's just write a few roots. 
So as we know, 1 means that the cell is alive, and we know that 0 means that cell is dead. Uh, we can have another flag and we can call it as minus 1, and minus 1 would denote that a cell was alive, but now it's dead. And 2 is going to just be, you know, cell was dead, but now it's alive. And we'll update those elements in place inside the matrix itself, and denoting these values will help us understand what we need to compute from there. So again, uh, you know, the sign sort of dictates another thing, but the magnitude is something which we'll be using. So if you have a magnitude of 1, that would mean that the cell in its previous state was alive. And then when we are done with our entire computation, we'll just update these minus 1s and 2s and then move forward from there. Right? Uh, and that's basically the way we want to go about it. So let's just do that. Let's just do an iteration to each of those elements. And the way to do that is by writing a for loop with all the rows and then all the columns. And basically, for each element, we need to compute the number of neighbors which it has, the live number of a live number of neighbors which it has. And the way we can do that is basically by having a counter, and we'll just call it live neighbors, which is going to be zero, and we'll keep on iterate. Uh, I mean, appending it as we find encounter another, oh, uh, another alive neighbor, right? So now what we want to do is we want to go for each neighbor. So we'll just do that for neighbor neighbors is basically referencing this particular list which we had built out and we'll you know find out the index of each new neighbor as well so let's just do that let's just do row plus neighbor zero and the new column is going to be column sorry plus neighbor of one so this is basically the index of all the all the neighbors that we have to go through and now we just have to check whether it's a valid thing or not so we'll just say hey if it's less than i mean it's in the range of zero to the rows and the same thing for the columns so let's just do that to columns and all we have to do is we have to check for for that particular for the neighbor um the neighbor row and column, those indexes, whether on that index that particular element or that cell is alive. And the way we can denote that is by basically understanding its magnitude, and we need to get a magnitude of 1. So we can just do ABS over here, which will just convert it to an absolute value and just check what's inside our code. So we do RC if it's equal, equal to 1, then we just, uh, you know, update our counters. So we'll say neighbors plus equal to 1 <clears throat> and that's basically it so we have computed for we basically for each element we would have computed the life neighbors which it has at that particular amount of time right now we'll just come out of it uh, and then we'll just you know go through all the rules which have been defined so uh, we'll try to go through each rule one by one so the first rule is any life cell with fewer than two life neighbors dies as it's under population and any live uh, cell with more than three live neighbors dies as it's by overpopulation. So let's just write a comment that we are handling rule one and rule three. This is just for you guys so that you can understand um, which particular rule are we sort of, you know, are taking care of right now. So we'll just say, hey, if this particular element that we've taken is alive, and the number of live neighbors that we have computed, right? If they're less than two, then that's underpopulation. Or if it's uh, if it's more than three, if the live number live neighbors is greater than three, then it has overpopulation. In which case, we need to update uh, this particular element. So we'll say board row call needs to be updated, sorry, to minus 1. 
and that's just something which we have said before that the silver is alive but now it's dead so we're killing it all and then we have to take care of all the other rules as well so we'll take care of rule number four now um any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell again this is just a simple if condition so we can just do that we can say hey the board was dead which which is actually depicted up as if this element had zero in it and the total number of life neighbors around it was equal equal to three then we need to update it by two as we mentioned before the cell was dead but now it's alive and that was depicted by two so let's just do that let's just say hey row column equal to two right um and I think that should be it. Are we missing out on anything else? Let me just check it out. Nope, seems we're running fine. We don't really need to take care of uh, rule number two because any life cell with two or three life neighbors lives on to the next generation. Uh, basically, we don't need to really update that. It remains on the same thing. So this was for rule four. That was for the previous one was for rule one and three. And rule two is how it gets handled. Um, on soon and now uh, basically we need to come out of the for loop so we come out of the for loops and now we just need to update our representation because we need to return it as zeros and ones and if we update it as if we send minus one and two that will give our incorrect uh, representation so let's just do that let's just do a simple for loop for row and range for column and range for all the columns and now all we have to do is hey if board if that particular element right if that particular element was greater than zero we know for a fact that it was alive so we just say hey board row call is equal to one else if that is not the case if it's less than zero then we know that it's dead and we'll just say that it's it's just, it's just sorry um it's just uh, a dead cell and that's basically it. We don't really need to return anything because it's getting modified in place. Um, but that's basically it. There's nothing more to it. Um, you just updated the cells and the entire crust of the problem was just that you have to do this in the most optimal way fashion uh, regarding space. Uh, and that's something that we did by just setting a few flags and then going about it from there. Uh, let's just run this code and see whether it's working fine or not or whether we missed out on any condition oh apparently we have uh let's just have a look at it oh yeah so this is board that was a syntax error let's just run this one more time cool and as you can see it's running fine let's just submit the solution Again, there's not much here, it's just doing a for loop, and as we're doing a for loop, we're just making sure that uh, we're counting the number of neighbors for each of those elements, and we're going forward from there. Cool, so you can see that this is running fine. Um, again, you can see that, you know, uh, time-wise, it's not the most optimal solution, that's just because, you know, you're doing another iteration uh, just to count the number, or sort of just update the board values, but space-wise, it's doing pretty well. Um, and that's basically it. Cool. Um, so if you do have any comments, you know, you can leave it in the comment section below. I would love to solve any of your queries. And if you did like this video, do give a like and do subscribe to the channel. We are discussion over here and we would love to have you on board with us. Um, again, if you've already subscribed, you're awesome. We all know it. And have an awesome day. Thank you.